Hey, y'all. I'm Paula Dean. There's just nothing that says America like that good old burger. So I'm gonna be fixing a burger banquet that's gonna please everybody. I'm gonna be stopping by the restaurant supply store to pick up some stuff for our party, and then it's back to the kitchen where I'll start with a black and blue burger that's just loaded with cheese. Next, I'm gonna take on Sloppy Joe. And after that, would you believe a burger from the sea? a tuna burger, and last but not least, a Savannah specialty, pecan stuffed burgers. So y'all grab plenty of napkins, cause I'm cooking up some good old elbow licking burgers today. Today's show is all about burgers. I'm actually fixing a burger banquet. But before I can do that, I wanna take y'all to our local restaurant supply house here in Savannah. Well, I finally made it to what I actually came shopping for. Look at all this cute little retro stuff that they've got. I think I got to have a, a condiment caddy. Isn't that cute? It kind of looks like from the 50s. Oh, and I got to have a napkin dispenser. Look at this old timey. This is what you see in like diners. This is just what I want. You're going to love their prices. like. This is only like $7.95. So eight bucks for that. It's it's a great price. And the little the little condiment caddy I picked up, it's not but four bucks. I mean you you can't get this at a dime store. Had fun. I really picked up some neat things and I can't hardly wait to go through this bag and pull everything out. But we're making so many burgers today, I think we need to get started. And the first burger that I'm starting with is a blue cheeseburger. And oh, it's so good. And I'm gonna start with a chunk of blue cheese and half a stick of butter. <laughs> and you'll wanna make sure that your butter is at room temperature. And this doesn't have to be smooth, but you just wanna incorporate that butter into that cheese real good. All right, I've got that mixed up. Now we're gonna add a little salt and a little black ground pepper and just mix that up. All we're gonna do is take our blue cheese and butter and we're gonna load it in a plastic wrap and we're just gonna roll our paper and work it into a log, just like this. And we're gonna just throw this into the refrigerator until it's hard and then we're gonna slice it and put it in between our burgers but I happen to have some already ready that's hardened in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna put this in and pull the other out and I'm gonna get the ground beef and we're gonna put these burgers together. All right, and I'm gonna cut our log of blue cheese and butter and I'm just gonna mold that meat around that chunk of cheese and butter. All right, we've about got these ready. Let's see how our pan looks. I thought for a second I had gotten it too hot. Now, a couple of tips about your burgers. You don't wanna flip them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. A hamburger is like a good steak. Turn it one time and just sear in all those juices. And you don't wanna take your spatula and mash them because that's gonna press out all the juice, which the juice is what makes it so dang good, you know? So you don't wanna mash that out of it. All right, so those are sizzling nicely. And I just looked down and saw that I forgot to take off my jewelry. And I just wanna tell y'all, Michael's gonna spank me. But I'm gonna take my jewelry off now because you really do, uh, when you're cooking, not want to wear your jewelry, especially when you're handling ground beef. So I'm going to get these off and go over there and wash my hands. And then we're going to move on over to a burger that just holds the sweetest memories for me and was so good. I ate tons of them as a teenager. My two best friends was uh, Diane and Darlene Tedder. And they lived a block away from me. And the first time they ever invited me to their house for a meal, they said, oh, Miss Hires, Miss Hires, please let Paula come eat supper with us. And um, 
I said, well, what are we going to have? <laughs> and they said, we're having sloppy joes. And I thought, well, hmm, that's not something we had at our house. So I went over to the Tedders, and we had sloppy joes. And they were so sloppy and so good. And they're so easy to make. So all we're going to do is take our ground beef. Now, this is a ground round, which is a little leaner. I wouldn't recommend this for a regular hamburger. But because we're going to juice this thing up, it'll be fine. This is by no means a fancy burger. We're just going to sprinkle our pan with flour, and that's going to make it thick for us because we're not adding a cream soup, we're adding an onion soup that has like your broth. And these burgers look and sound like they're ready to be flipped. Ooh, and you can see some of that cheese I'm trying to ooze out of them. Ooh. All right, now we're gonna come back over here. I'm just gonna cover that and cut that aisle for a minute because these burgers, I think, are ready for us to build and put together. All right, I'm ready to build some burgers here. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I love mayonnaise on my hamburger. And look at that, look at the cheese that ran out of that. I hate that I missed it, so I'm gonna just kinda do it like that. <laughs> and look. I got the cheese magically on it. All right, so I'm gonna put just a little mayonnaise. I'm not much of a ketchup eater on my burgers, but I do love lettuce and tomato. And I'm gonna come over here and steal some of this onion for those sloppy joes. Look at that, doesn't that look like a wonderful burger? Can't hardly really wait to taste. Oh, oh, big. It's so good. I can taste the blue cheese. I gotta run for a second, but when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make that delicious Sloppy Joe and tuna burgers. So y'all don't go anywhere. It's time for us to fix this blast from the past here, these sloppy joes. And before we left, you know, I told you I'd put the flour in there. And it's good and hot. Now all we're gonna do is add a French onion soup to it. It's almost just like beef broth. So we really needed that flour to help thicken it up because we want as much of that burger as we can to stay on that bread and I'm gonna let it cook and thicken. And while we're doing that, we're gonna come over here and make a tuna burger. I'm telling you, it's a burger frenzy today, and I'm gonna be stuffed by the time this day's over. I'm already full, I ate way too much of that last burger. I was just gonna taste it and almost gobble the whole thing down before I knew it. All right, we're gonna start with a couple of eggs, and we're gonna beat them. And then we're gonna add just a canned tuna, and I'm using a white, albacore tuna. Naturally, and you want to drain that. All right, and I'm gonna look over here at our sloppy joes. You can see it getting thick. I'm gonna leave it uncovered now at this point so some of the moisture can cook out of it. All right, and I'm gonna add breadcrumbs to this tuna and egg mixture. And diced onions, and these are diced fairly fine. And a little celery and a little pimento for color. Just that little bit of red in there is awfully pretty. And we're putting some chopped fresh garlic. And for a little spice and heat, we're putting some horseradish. If you take too big a whiff of this, it'll clean out your sinuses for you. <laughs> and we're gonna do about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay, so we're gonna let this heat up. And I found the best way to do these burgers is brown them in the skillet, and then we'll put the skillet in the oven and let them finish cooking out, because it's got those eggs in it, and you don't want to run the risk of the burger getting too dark and, and then the egg 
center being like raw. So we've got everything mixed together and I'm gonna add just a little fresh ground pepper. And this is the neatest pepper grinder. Somebody actually made this and brought it by the restaurant for me. It looks like a lighthouse because you know Savannah's known for their lighthouses. That's a neat one. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil in our pan, not much, just a little. We're just gonna shape these into patties. So we're just gonna brown these off. We're gonna flip them one time and then we're gonna run them into the oven for about 10 minutes on about 350 degrees. But this is a nice little variation for tuna. You can get tired of just plain old tuna salad. Let me give my hands a quick wash. Hey, Harry. These sloppy joes are looking perfect. All right, let's see if these are ready to flip. All right, let's gently turn that. See how pretty that looks? I don't like mine real, real, real dark. Let's see if this one's ready to turn. Yeah, that looks good and I'm gonna just do a little bit more olive oil over it. All right, so let's get these in here. And it's time to taste this other burger. And the way we're gonna eat these is just plain old white bread. I'm gonna just smear this with some mustard. This is how they taught me to eat them. But over the years, I actually added mayonnaise to it too. And fresh onions, looks so good. And we're just gonna pile that sloppy joe mixture right up there like that. And then we're just gonna take our bread and we're gonna smush it. Now I'll tell y'all right now, this is not a pretty burger, but it's so tasty. Mmm, it's just like I remember. <laughs> I've got to leave for a second, but y'all don't go anywhere. Stick around, because we're going to finish up those tuna burgers. And just when you think a pecan couldn't get any better, I've got another surprise for you. Pecan stuffed burgers. Okay, let's see if these tuna burgers are ready. They should be. Ooh, don't they look good? I have just put that bun in that pan and I've got it on low for it to heat up. And over here, we're gonna just lightly, lightly cook our bacon. And this is going on the pecan stuffed burger. And we're not gonna cook this all the way done because we just want it pliable, so keep a close eye on this. I'm gonna flip this burger, that tuna burger. Ooh, it looks so good. All right, I'm gonna flip this bacon and you can see it's getting a wee bit brown. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the pan now because I really don't want that to start getting crisp and brown because I'd never be able to get it wrapped around that burger. I'm gonna let it rest there and we'll go put together our burgers. And the filling is so interesting. I told y'all earlier that just when you think pecans were just over the top, they keep getting better. I'm back to my old tricks here. I'm gonna use a half a stick of butter and some grated onion and some chopped pecans and some fresh parsley. And once again, that butter's real, real soft. It's gonna taste like roasted pecans in the center of these burgers. I'm gonna put some salt in it because I love the saltiness of a pecan, so that's gonna make it savory. I think I'm even gonna put a little pepper. Ooh, these are gonna be delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out so it can be cooling. All right, so what we're gonna do is take our patty, put, ooh, about two tablespoons of our filling. 
and then we're going to take the second patty and place on top of that and we're going to seal the edges and just wrap it around there. If your bacon is shrunk up too much, you can just kind of tug on it. All right, these are ready to go into the oven. Now we're going to actually broil these rather than bake them. Put those on the pan and you'll need to watch these pretty closely because that brawl heat is pretty hot. I've got some over here that's already ready. Oh, look, look at that nice burger. Oh, and let's check our... Oh, doesn't that look good? That bun's had a chance to get nice and warm. For our tuna burger, I really wanted a different kind of topping rather than mayonnaise or ketchup. So I have an avocado sauce, and we're going to just serve that just like that. All right, now you want to make sure that you remove the toothpicks. Oh, look how good that looks. All right, so I've got my pecan burger, got my tuna burger. Gosh, I don't know which one to taste first. I think I'll go for the tuna burger first. Look at that avocado sauce. Looks wonderful. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. All right, let's go over here and check this bad boy out. Look how good that looks. Mmm. Look at that. It's delicious. I gotta run clean up, y'all. <laughs> but y'all hang with me, because next I'm gonna be showing y'all some tips. Some good tips. I want to share with y'all now a few things that will just make your burger banquet so fun. And you may say, Paula, that's a lot of trouble. I don't want to go to that trouble. But you're going to have such a good time at the restaurant supply store. And once you get all this stuff and have it, then it's so easy to just pull out time after time after time. And I'll tell you another place that's good to pick up some of these retro things is at yard sales. These adorable little retro glasses. They were probably made in the 50s and 60s. And I actually found those at a yard sale. And I do love a yard sale. And I found at the restaurant supply place little menu holders. And you can see I even did my menu up on the computer. And this is the greatest trick. This is a bar condiment tray. This makes a wonderful condiment tray for your burgers. And I picked up these neat baskets. And all I'll do is have some parchment paper and napkins, and everybody can come through the burger buffet and put anything that you want on it. And you can see I've got slaw and potato chips and onions and different kinds of cheeses lettuce, tomato, all kind of pickles. And speaking of burgers, it's time for me to go in the house and gather them all up. Mm, I can't wait. Well, I've got all the burgers out here. In fact, I even got my basket fixed. And today's menu is really affordable. You can get a Sloppy Joe for one kiss, a pecan burger for just one hug, and a tuna burger for one smile. And if you eat all of these, I suspect by the time you get to that black and blue burger, you're probably going to be cussing Opala. But that's all right. It'll be fun. So until next time, America, I send y'all love and best dishes from my burger banquet to yours.